guys, what's up? It's uh, Desmios here, back with another video, finally, and I know it's been kind of a while. Um, I got a new setup in my room today. Um, this is my bookcase thing that I have this on, and over there is my desk now, but the thing that I wanted to tell you today, um, you probably saw the title of the video, and it's one thing I hate about Christians um, with a passionate heart. And I'm a Christian, you know that, this this is a Christian channel, um, I mean, I've been a Christian since, uh, well, for a long time, since I was like nine, um, but I got rebaptized in about September, um, became a little more serious, um, and, but honestly though, um, one thing I hate about Christians is this, is I've actually experienced this lately. Um, it's this whole thing about how little can I do? And that's the destruction of the church. That's the destruction of the mission of God. That's the destruction of your relationship with God is this whole viewpoint of how little can I do to have an incredible relationship with God? How little can I read my Bible? How little can I pray? How little can I do this or this or that? You know, and God doesn't want that from you. He wants you to humble yourself before him. That's why it says in James, it says, quit it with these arrogant schemes of yours. Thinking that, well, okay, I don't want to work too hard. So I'm going to work a little. Uh, I'll see how far that gets me. And, and then I'll try a little more. And maybe maybe that'll work. But But God's like, I don't want you to even think about what it'll get you to. He's like, yes, fix your eyes on the hope of glory. That That's how we stand firm in our faith is by fixing our eyes on, on the end sometimes, you know? Um, but he's saying, stop thinking that, okay, well, I'll do this for a little bit, but until this gets me to here, then I'm going to stop that. And, uh, well, okay, I guess I'll read my Bible a little more, you know, just a little, maybe like, you know, in a paragraph a day, a chapter a day, and that'll get me to here. And then if I if I don't get to here, then yeah, I might try a little harder. But we need to stop it with this legalistic, selfish um, mindset, and it's it's ridiculous. What God wants is reverence for Him. What He wants is a want for Him. A want that is not built on, well, I'll go this far with you, but anywhere past there where I actually have to try in life, well, I'm, no, I'm not going to do that. But he hates that. He hates that mindset of, you know, because it says in, what is it, uh, 1 Corinthians or second or 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight, it says, work enthusiastically for the Lord because nothing done in the name of the Lord is useless. It's not useless. And this is a ridiculous thing with Christians now is lately, I know we're in quarantine area right now, but, um, and it's not my family. It's other people that I've been talking to and I see their lifestyles and I'm like, well, they're fine. They love God. They got God. You know, they, they read, they do all that stuff. Their theology is right. So I, I'll just do what they're doing. And so I totally dropped this lifestyle of getting up in the morning, sometimes working at myself so hard that I would have panic attacks. And and then I would go and God, God would do that so that I'd go to my Bible and I'd be like, oh, yes, like rest the Lord. I love you. And then I go away from it. Then I come back and it's this mindset of restlessness. Like, like Paul says, actually, um, in second Corinthians six, he's like, dude, we went through sleepless nights, imprisonments, riots, trials. I mean, severe punches, you know, like they went through everything for the gospel. And this is why I hate American Christianity for this reason is that we are so much more addicted to having Jesus as an addition to our lives rather than an addiction. And, and that's the ridiculous thing. Because what Jesus wants from you is just your reverence. Just your want to realize the power 
that the that the word that the scripture holds to wake up in the morning so excited that you're like you know what this is what leads me in life this is this is what i know when i can know nothing else this is literally the wisdom of god that that he's giving me the opportunity to read every single day but a lot of us just conform to the mindset of well i'll go this far but i won't go any farther that that's not what god wants what he wants is this for, for you to be restless what happened to restless christianity what happened to praying for 10 days a week then preaching for 10 minutes now now we're in this mindset of wow well, I'll, I'll preach for 10 days a week and i'll pray for 10 minutes we're so much more addicted to giving god our leftovers and and we're so much more addicted to doing the stuff that's easy and comfortable. And we all know this. Even the comfortable people know that there are comfortable Christians, but they don't see themselves in that area. And I didn't see myself in the area for a long time recently, and I realized I am in this area of comfortability. I'm not willing to fight against fatigue or sleep to wake up in the morning earlier. I, I'm not willing to crack open my Bible and not just crack, but get into it. Like, I'm not willing. Why are we not willing? Because we don't want to try hard. We're, we're not the type of Christians in America who are willing to try hard. We'll see a person who got it all figured out, who got it all together, and will be like, well, they're not really doing a lot, but they have God, and they, they're they cool, and, you know, they're... They got good recognition, they got good reputation, so, like, I'll just go over there. And God God doesn't want that. What he wants is your surrender and your submission and your spirit and your love for him. What happened in restless Christianity? I'm not saying to be hard on yourself, but I'm saying that, guys... We got to read this word. We got to pray. We got to be serious about this, especially in this time. Because now I have this mindset of no longer chasing after God. Because people say that, well, if you resist the devil, then he'll flee. Well, if you do this and this and that, it, that's not what he says. He says, you know what? Be happy that the war is coming at you. Because if it wasn't, you better be worried. Because you're no longer an enemy to Satan. What you are is, is you're nothing. You're nothing. You're not a battle. You're not a fight. He's not going to waste his time on you. Because you're not trying. You're not fighting. And he wants you to fight. He wants you to live for him. So that's basically the problem. <laughs> with uh, my problem with Christians right now. And guys, we just got to get up and fight. Because we can keep complaining, well, yeah, I should probably pray more. Yeah, I should probably read more. And none of this is to be holier than thou. None of reading your Bible more, praying more, none of that is to be holier than thou. And if you are, pray about it. And God will probably deliver you from it if you're doing his will. Do his will, guys. You know what Paul said in Acts 20? I count my life as nothing is nothing. All your power right now, you are you are weak. You are your poop actually is is what he calls us. You're a worm. You know who who God called a worm? His chosen city. He called it a worm because he knew that what worms, yeah, they're cool. But no one's going to be like, "Oh yeah, that worm, he's got some power. He can take care of himself." No, no one's going to say that. Worms are incapable of power. And Jesus knows that. That's why he came. So delight in his power. Get off your butt and fight.